Last part of our video, the Great Migration, 1960 to 1930. This is the migration of Black Americans out of the South, out of the agricultural-based South, and into the North. And now today, and you'll notice they go to mainly cities. Why are they going to cities? Because that's where the jobs are. We've talked about this before in the podcast. Podcast. This is not a podcast. They go to the cities because that's where the jobs are. You go to where the work is. And so today, many of these cities have large African American or Black American populations. They leave the South because there aren't any jobs here. They leave the agrarian, 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 agricultural based South and move to the cities where the cities have industrialized, where there's factories and there's railroads and there's roads and there's automobiles. So they move from the South and go to the North. And so in your book, it's going to say that they move from the South. Let me see. Or you can look this up in the study guide. You can find the study guide at socialstudiesgames.us, where I've basically gone through the AP guidelines and given you basically the notes here. And so it says they move to the cities and then they eventually end up in ghettos and deal with racism. Sort of, kind of, but not necessarily the truth, because the reality is those cities had black populations and those cities were becoming desegregated during this time. Before the Great Migration, before the Great Migration, the cities had black populations, not large black populations, but they did have black populations and they were slowly becoming desegregated. And uh, we can actually, W.E.B. Du Bois, we'll talk about this second in a second, talks about how Philadelphia is becoming a great city to live in and blacks are living with whites and everything is good and it's very equal before the Great Migration. Now, before I talk about this next maybe controversial subject, let's just remember that push-pull factors in immigration or in migration push factors are the things that push you out of a place and pull factors are what pull you into a new location push factors like the south few services lack of job opportunities is usually a big one there wasn't very many jobs in the south because there weren't very many cities there weren't very many factories there were just farms and sharecropping was not the best job in the world. You couldn't really make money. It was almost a new form of slavery. So you're being pushed out by few job opportunities, unhappiness, poor transportation. There weren't very many roads. There wasn't very many railroads in the South. So that uh, hampered the growth of the economy. You don't really build factories when you don't have roads because you can't ship goods in and out. Not so much natural disasters. The weather in the South is just fine. Wars, we don't have to worry about that, but often throughout history, you'll see people leave countries from wars. Today, you have people leaving war-torn countries or countries that are dealing with uh, all kinds of problems, internal strife, and then shortage of food, not really. Services, people in the city today, because there's grocery stores, there's hospitals, there are government agencies that help you out. So if you are a low-income individual, you can go down to the government agency right down the street and they will help you out. If you live in a rural area, it is very difficult to get government services in terms of food and health care and even education. A lot of those services are not provided. And so you get pulled to the city. The poor get pulled to the city where the government agencies are located so that they can get the resources that they need. Job opportunities, entertainment. You might move to a city someday because it's got stuff to do. Transportation, better living conditions. You want to get away from wherever you are. All right, now the controversial topic for some, maybe not others. So like I was saying before, Philadelphia, according to W.E.B. Du Bois, was a great place to live and it was doing really well, but this was all before the Great Migration. Unfortunately, and you'll see this in Thomas Sowell's book, he hypothesizes about black rednecks and white liberals. What does that mean? This sounds weird. There's no such thing as a black redneck. So black redneck culture is very similar to white redneck culture. It has its roots in England during the 1600s, 1700s. The Highland Scots, the Ulster Irish were rednecks. And these individuals were violent. It was their culture. This is over in England, by the way. They're violent, licentious. They lacked and did not support education. They were criminals. So the characteristics, the culture of the Ulster Irish and the Highland Scots, they just, they weren't successful. They weren't educated. They struggled. Well, those individuals, when they left the United Kingdom, they left Ireland, they left Scotland, they settled in the South 
during the 16 and 1700s, and they brought their culture with them. And that culture influenced Southern whites and the black slaves, and then the blacks as they were freed. The culture, and this is all hypothesized in his book and in various other books, black, red, next white liberals, cracker culture, you even see little bits of this in Hillbilly Elegy, that the culture was violent. It didn't work very hard. And you'll see, uh, if you read the, the writings of Alex de Tocqueville or Frederick Law Olmsted, they all write about this while traveling through the South that they don't really, and it's not just uh, example, like, oh, they're just lazy. They give specific examples of how the Southern whites and Southern blacks were terrible farmers and how none of the inventions came out. So all the farming before this time was in the South, but all the inventions for farming came from the North. The South could not make milk, could not make milk. They could not make cheese. They had, Texas had all the cows. We talked about this before, but they couldn't make milk in the South because they were lazy, dumb farmers. That sounds like an exaggeration, but Frederick Law Olmsted talks about it. Uh, Alex de Tocqueville talks about it. They, they are shocked by the way that the Southerners live, by their culture, and how they are so different from the Northern whites and the Northern blacks because the North was settled by England, by Germany, by a different type of people with different characteristics, with different values. The Puritans being one of the ones that jumps out of the page. They lived a different life than the Southerners. This was two different countries. A lot of times we think, oh, it's all the United States. It's not. Before the Civil War, they were called these United States, meaning that they were separate and different. And the North and the South were completely different. They were closed off. After the Great Migration, we will get blacks that move to these cities and bring with them their culture, which was violent, licentious, did not believe in education. Uh, they were, many were criminals. And you're going to say, this is racist. No, they, all of this is backed up by data and by research. And you can see this in census reports before the move. You could see that in the South, crime happened more. There was more violent crime. There was less education. You had more children born out of wedlock. You had all of these issues happening in the South. And then all those issues leave the South, move to the North where blacks and whites were doing pretty well and prospering and becoming equal and integrated. And then it's not necessarily, it's black people. It's just the culture that comes with them. This is all hypothesized in black rednecks and white liberals as why these cities turn into ghettos. They were not ghettos. There was not problems. Sure, there were issues, but not nearly like there were after the Great Migration because of the culture that they brought with them. And it's not just Blacks, it's whites as well. You can read stories of the whites that moved from Appalachia up to cities in Ohio and Michigan. This is uh, J.D. Vance's Hillbilly Elegy talks about this, how the whites up here did not let, want the Southern whites moving up because they were violent. They were criminals. They were aggressive. They didn't believe in education. If you insulted them, they wanted to shoot you. There was, they lacked a culture of dignity. They were about the culture of honor. You can read about that from Jonathan Haidt. You can read about that in Malcolm Gladwell. There's a, there are books and books and books that support this theory. Why we don't talk about it, it's because anytime we ever talk about anything that involves race, people just say, you're a racist. Well, we've got books and books and books over the last 300 years that says, well, there was this culture in the South. And it's not a black culture. It's not a white culture. It's actually a culture that came from Ireland and from Scotland. The accent, the urban accent that is used, which some people call ebonics or whichever you want to use, ghetto slang, the way that we speak or the way that the black redneck spoke was actually from the Scottish. It's actually from the, the, the Ulster Irish. That's why, where these things come from. It's very interesting and worth studying. But of course, when you say that, someone's probably already saying, no, Scar is a racist. I am not a racist. This is a hypothesis that kind of explains what might have happened. Maybe it's not right and more research needs to happen. But it seems like there's a lot of compelling evidence that there was a culture that came with to the north that caused the ghettos to form because the ghettos weren't there before. So when they move, unfortunately, we always say, oh, they moved, they, it's a, they just moved to another ghetto. They didn't move to another ghetto. The ghetto was formed when the migration happened. And then a lot of times, well, it's just straight racism. Well, it is racism, but there wasn't racism before, at least to that extent. The racism did occur, but the racism happened because of the culture that was brought with them. 
So compare and contrast Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois. Remember that we've kind of exaggerated their differences. One was more politically active. One believed in education. That's a simple answer. The Great Right Migration is the move of black Americans to the north in northern cities, 1960, 1930. That's a simple answer. If you really want to dig deep into the work of Thomas Sowell, Malcolm Gladwell, J.D. Vance, Alex de Tocqueville, and all the names of people that you can research to find out if what I'm saying is true, there's tons of research that you can dive into and find out, oh, maybe there is a little bit of truth there. And then push-pull factors, the things that push you out of where you're living, the things that pull you in and say, I want to go live in that place. Thanks for joining me, guys.